Hey, how's it going guys? I'm Artori Gold with LFG and I just got finished with BlizzCon 2021's opening ceremony. We have gotten a lot of new information that gave us a glimpse into the future and what to expect. While I am super excited for TBC Classic, we really didn't get a whole lot of information about Overwatch 2. However, there were a couple of things that actually will have a huge impact in Overwatch PvP once it is released, but I can only assume that those changes will not be going live until Overwatch 2 comes out. So here is my BlizzCon 2021 recap. I first wanted to start with Overwatch 2. First off, the absolute best and biggest piece of news that I got from BlizzCon was that Jeff Kaplan himself admitted to how 2CP was a mistake and said that he thinks 2CP will not be a game mode in Overwatch 2. You know, we're of the mindset maybe maybe 2CP doesn't exist in Overwatch 2. This is the kind of news that makes me surge with a happiness that I didn't even know existed. For years, I've sat around at a single choke point for four minutes straight, dying over and over again on every single 2CP map. It's been absolutely miserable. The 2CP maps are literally just entire teams being wiped out over and over again until the last 10 seconds of the game, when your team finally starts playing correctly and you fight on the damn point for once instead of just staggering and feeding non-stop. However, that's not even the worst part of 2CP. For me, it's the stalling. As soon as you finally reach the point and it looks like you are actually about to win, now all of a sudden people all switch to heroes like Wrecking Ball and Mei and Lucio and all they do is stall the point for what feels like forever. 2CP is one of the most frustrating game modes I have ever ever experienced. And it's so bad, I can't even tell you how many ranked games have happened where people would straight up dodge and leave the game so we wouldn't have to play on those maps. To hear Jeff Kaplan himself recognize the shortcomings of 2CP and also realize nobody enjoys that game mode is one of the most satisfying moments for me as a Overwatch player. This keeps me very hopeful for the future of Overwatch PvP. In addition to this, we also got a little update about roles. It looks like they are planning on making tanks all shift into more of a bruiser role and less of a full-on tank. They gave us examples of Reinhardt having more control over his charge, even being able to cancel it if he wants. In addition, he also got two Fire Strike charges, and it looks like they nerfed his shield to 800 health. They said how they wanted tanks to be more powerful and more active than just being the shield guy who protects the team. This seems like a great change to me, simply because I can't stand sitting around shooting at shields. Ever since they introduced new shield heroes such as Orisa and Sigma, we've had to deal with a variety of double shield comps that are so miserable to deal with, especially as a DPS player. Absolutely nobody likes shooting at shields. It's not fun, and it shouldn't be what the game is about. So if the price of nerfing shields to the ground is to give all the the tanks more damage, then that is fine by me. They also mentioned how they are playing around with roll buffs. What that meant was, is if you were to play as a DPS hero, then you would get a straight buff to your movement speed. This could be a really cool buff for a lot of heroes, such as Reaper and Genji, but I don't really see that being as effective for other heroes such as Mei, or even Widowmaker. However, being able to move faster will be a lot of fun, and a decent way to make DPS feel better to play against the now stronger and slower moving tanks. The support role buff seems to be very similar to what Mercy already has. Every support role will get a small heal over time effect after not taking any damage for a while. This is pretty cool, but honestly I don't find it super useful on every support hero. For example, Lucio won't really care about this, but heroes like Anna will love it. Last but not least, the tank role gets knockback reduction. 
This will be very nice against things that other tanks do, such as the very annoying Wrecking Ball. But they also get a really cool new effect where enemies will gain less ultimate charge whenever they shoot you. I really do think this idea is really cool. DPS heroes should always be looking to kill the squishies first. I think all of this shows a very strong future for Overwatch 2, and it makes me really happy to hear that they are looking to change things up pretty drastically for PvP, and that they are not just focusing on the PvE aspect. I do think that all the PvE stuff is pretty cool, but that isn't what I play Overwatch for. It's mostly for the multiplayer, so that's all I really wanted to talk about, since it's all I really care about. They also did show off a little bit of Swordsworn, hopefully I'm saying that right, and she seems like a pretty nice DPS hero that shoots a railgun, but we didn't get to see much. Same with the addition of two new maps, Rome and New York, which all seem pretty cool, but they didn't really let us see a whole lot of them. Now on to the negative things about Overwatch 2. Well, they didn't give us a release date, no new cinematic, and no new heroes. I don't really know what's going on with current Overwatch 1, but it doesn't look like they are planning on releasing any new content for the game. It looks like to me, everything new will be moving on to Overwatch 2, which is fine, really, but if that was the case, then it would really be nice to know how long we will have to wait, since they didn't give us a date that can really only mean one thing, we have to wait a long time before it is ready. So while I am pretty optimistic about the game once it's released, you know, just don't hold your breath or anything, I doubt this game is coming out anytime soon. Now, moving on to the other news I was super excited about, and that is, of course, TBC Classic. This is something I am so fucking excited for, I can't wait to get my Warlock on Fairbanks across that dark portal and into the Outlands. So I wanted to cover some of the more important pieces of information that we have gotten. First off, there will be some changes. There might even be some more changes, but it's really hard to say. Maybe we will get a lot more information down that road once the beta kicks off. So one of my first issues with TBC Classic is that I wanted to know how the content would be released. As you know, when TBC was first launched, it had SSC and Tempest Keep on launch, which is something that in modern times I definitely wanted to see changed. With how good every player is nowadays, we would have seen so many people skip so much content and not progress naturally. People would have skipped as much as possible to get right to Tempest Keep, so you could start following farming tier 5 loot. Luckily, they announced that phase 1 will only be Karazhan, Gruul's, and Magtheridon's lair. Phase 2 is Serpent Shrine Cavern and Tempest Keep. I can't tell you how happy this change makes me. Now players will progress through the raids naturally, and everybody can farm out their tier 4 pieces without replacing them right away. In addition to that, we also learned that the super overpowered Seal of Blood ability for the Paladins will not be Horde exclusive. This will be a great balancing change that I'm sure Alliance players will love. Both faction exclusive seals will now be available for everybody, but only once you are level 70. It's nice to see there is some exclusivity while leveling, but ultimately once you are max level, that restriction is gone. Another huge update is that we are also going to have pre-nerf bosses. So if you don't know a lot of bosses in TBC, they were actually super hard back in the day. Bosses such as Muru and Sunwell were so difficult that nobody could beat them in the original TBC, so Blizzard had to nerf them. However, in modern times, the players are much better than what they used to be, so they are keeping the original difficulty for the bosses of TBC Classic. This was something I really wanted wanted from WoW Classic. I wanted that original difficulty that I had when going through Vanilla. I'm so happy to hear that TBC is going through with this change, because I personally love seeing guilds wipe to all of the older content. Now, there is one thing that I think should be changed in TBC Classic that they didn't mention, and hopefully we can shine some more light on the subject, which of course is leatherworking. If you didn't know, the Drums of Battle are a very OP item in TBC, which essentially you spam in raids in order to maximize everybody's DPS. This is something that I think needs to be nerfed heavily, or else a lot of people will have leatherworking as their main profession. Saying like, 
but you've got to do something about those drums. And uh, and we looked into it, and yeah, there is. We definitely want to make some change there. Yeah. Uh, we want to adjust them in some way so it doesn't feel like everybody who wants to be uh, like maximally, you know, opti optimize their output has to go leather work leather working. That feels bad when. Uh, like it basically gets down to like it's a party wide buff. It lasts for uh, for enough time with a cooldown of enough time with no like shared cooldown or debuff that you could have. I think it's it's either four or even all five members of your party like doing a rotation of drums yeah. so that everybody has to have leather working to do that. It's like okay, well that's ridiculous. So we're we're gonna do some kind of minor adjustment there to make it so that it doesn't feel compulsory for literally everyone to do it. Moving on to some other important details. We learned that on patch day, we will have a choice to make on every single one of our characters. We will have to decide if we want to continue to TBC on our current server, or do we transfer our character to a forever classic realm. Apparently, you can choose both options, but it will be behind a paywall, and we don't really know exactly how much that will cost. I suppose this answers a lot of questions people were having on how the transfer would work. I, for one, personally hope that they add fresh classic servers and even fresh TBC servers, but we didn't get any news on that, sadly. We also received word that you will be able to pay for a level 58 character boost in preparation for TBC. We don't know the price of it, but we do know that you can't use it on a Blood Elf or Draenei, and you are limited to only one per account. These are at least some nice restrictions. I personally am not a fan of this, I feel like it belittles my accomplishment of getting to 60. Hopefully this is expensive enough to a point where people think twice about doing it and instead decide on just putting in the extra effort themselves in order to get to 60. It really isn't that difficult guys, in fact it's really fun to level your way through Azeroth. While I don't like the character boost, at least they made it only one per account, and you can't use it on any of the new races. Hopefully nobody finds a way to ever exploit this, that also is one of my worries. Now, the last bit of information we got is that we also have a big pre-patch day. This means that before the Dark Portal finally opens and we can start our journey to level 70, there will be a moment of time where every player can start leveling Blood Elves and Draenei. This also means that you can have time to mess around with all of the new talents for every class. I for one will have a lot of fun leveling a Blood Elf Pally on that day, and it gives everybody a chance to hit level 58 naturally, so that if you wanted to level a Blood Elf with everybody else once Outlands is released, you can absolutely do that. Overall, I'm pretty happy with all of the news that we got. I'm a little bummed out about the character boost, however, we have a lot of time before everything is set in stone and with a beta on the way, I can only imagine we have these worries addressed. Well, anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, and make sure to check me out over at twitch.tv slash artorigold, where I stream every day Tuesday through Saturday around 6pm PST. And if you wanted to see all of my live reactions to all of the BlizzCon announcements, you can check it over on my other channel where I will put the link down below. Anyways guys, thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you next time. White greenish tint to it. What's the what's the damage on that one? Uh, nine. Nine damage. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Sorry. As you pull out of it, you watch as it screams and squeals, and you pull the life force. Whatever.